Things don't happen, things aren't made to happen. John F. Kennedy. What life experiences have shaped your values in life? And I think a lot of things stem from the past, how you think, how you feel, how you behave. They all came from the past. And when you're zero from day one from five years old, you're the most impressionable because you learn a lot when you're young and you're rapidly growing during those times. My problems were I was poor economically. I had a broken family. I didn't grow up with my mother. My family, they were pretty avoidant. My parents, they came from Vietnam. They grew up during the start of the war. They were avoidant. I lacked uh, native language because I didn't necessarily learn how to speak Chinese or Vietnamese. I was introverted, poor communication, body language. There was one time when I was told that my posture was bad and it's true that if you're in a fearful state, you're going to be in a defensive mode and your body kind of gets locked in that position, but you can learn how to have better posture because when you're standing up straight, you look healthier, you look stronger. It's important to look your best because then you would be attracting those kinds of feelings, those kinds of experiences, and those kinds of people in your life. You attract mirrors of yourself. Everybody wants love, they want relationships, they want wealth, and you would have to align, align all of your stars so that they line up. Make sure that you're on, you have a winning strategy in life. I'm a minority, and I think when I was a kid, I didn't like myself as a kid, but I also got attacked that I got made fun of because I grew up upstate New York, Syracuse. There's not that many Asian people in that area at that time. And I used to get into fights every year when I was in elementary school, middle school. Sometimes when I were to talk to my friends, I would ask them, how many times did you get into a fight when you were a kid? And some men, some boys, they said, oh, I never fought before. And I thought that, well, that's kind of weird, right? How is it that you never fought when I had to fight all, all the time? Also, no mother, uh, avoidant father, and your parents, they're important because they teach you how to act around the opposite sexes. So, for example, your mother would teach you how to act around women. Your father would teach you how to be a man, how to act around other men, and also how to treat other women. If your parents, they're your role models, they could be your role models. You can see the things that they're doing and it doesn't matter if they're correct or not, that you have the intelligence, you have the opportunity, the intelligence and how you feel to determine what's correct and what isn't correct. Because if you see your father putting his hands on a woman, you would know that that's wrong. It's not a good thing to do. But just know it that in life, if you were to join a martial arts gym or something like that, you're gonna learn to lose, so you can learn to win. You would figure out to win, and don't necessarily look at someone else. Oh, they have a black belt, or they're better than me. Compare yourself from day one to your present self. You're competing with yourself, you're not competing with other people in general. While well, life is shades of gray, it's not black and white because you could be competing against somebody if you're on the mat with somebody you're competing with them it's kind of a battle in your mind where you're competing you're trying to see you're trying to figure out how can i win what are things that i could do and envision focus on winning focus on where you want to go versus if you say i don't want to get tapped out or i don't want to lose you're looking at losing, you're looking on failing versus I'm going to do my best, I'm going to train as hard as I can, whatever happens, I have a outcome independent mindset. I lacked love when I was a kid and when I met my mother, I had the chance to meet her, I had a chance to talk to her and I asked her, how did you grow up? And she said, I didn't have good relations with my mother and father and that's why I know, that's why she never came back. And I know that she doesn't love herself because I asked her straight up, do you love yourself? And then she got upset with me. And I think that uh, going through breakups, going through childhood experiences, they teach you that self-love, it comes from your heart. It comes from you, yourself. It doesn't come from anyone else. Nobody could love you 
it doesn't come from another person externals that you have to give it to yourself you would have to learn how to give it to yourself even if you can't say it it's the things that you do that shows that you love yourself for example do you eat real food do you diet do you exercise do you take care of your hygiene do you try and look your best and if you're saying oh i'm not the best looking person it's in your mindset right that you're not trying to attract everybody in the world you're trying to attract the people that want you around and you would have to work with what you have because i could say i'm five six and a half i'm short but there are certain people where they ain't got legs and they're shorter than me that's why you should always appreciate your blessings be your best friend learn how to communicate with yourself so that you could communicate with other people you have 50 to 60 thousand thoughts when i was young i was thinking i wanted to be a pathologist because those people they're dead already i would be doing an investigation on them and i wouldn't have to talk about me growing up i know that it doesn't matter what position you're in you need to be able to communicate with other people because it would affect your quality of life it would affect the quality of relationships, how you feel with yourself. And I'm going to prove to you that feelings do matter. And I know that in general, they don't teach men to feel. Also, for Asian culture, they don't care about your feelings. They'll just tell you straight up, but why do you watch comedies? Why do you watch shows? Because they make you feel good. And even though you could be consuming bad music, you could be tricking yourself into believing that it's normal to feel that way or you could be tapping into that but why are humans so successful because they, they reproduce they're surviving that uh, these are the things as to why feelings are important because they want to feel those kinds of things and people live and die for these kinds of feelings imagine if you're using your hand if you had to hold on to something if i took away your thumb you wouldn't be able to hold on, right? You're weak, you're not 100%. But if, if I gave you all of your feelings, whether or not this represents your feelings, this will represent your strength, your stamina, your speed, your endurance, you would need to be utilizing 100%. And then even then, life is hard because there's still ways of how people could counter you, how people can manipulate you. I think that I had a lack of love for myself and it affects how the moves that you make, it affects how successful that you are because I could be placing myself in a box where if I had a limited mindset, I would only see these things and once I get close, I will go back to center. But if, if I could think of there's a big world side and I can achieve anything, I just have to figure it out how to get it. Also for lack of role models, I think since the United States only has 7% Asian people that you're not necessarily going to see your people on camera. And that's why I think that it's important for you to create your own content so that it's tailored specific to you so that you could focus on where you want to go, focus on your kind of journeys to connect with your kind of people. And I could say there's a lot of people like me. Maybe there are, maybe there are. I think most people, they didn't necessarily have my problems. Their problems are different. They could be relatable. And when I was a kid, I was that kid that ate lunch alone because I didn't necessarily speak any Asian language and I didn't look like the other kids. I ate lunch alone. I was a lone wolf sometimes. I just wouldn't even go into the cafeteria because I didn't want to sit alone. But uh, I think it's because I was telling myself that nobody wants to talk to you, nobody wants to sit with you. And I was creating those kinds of things. And if you could imagine a better life, what, what do you want? I can't tell you what that is, but for me, I would want freedom. I would want to be the strongest version of myself. I would want to be able to communicate better with myself and other people. I want to rise to be able to achieve my goals in life. And it, it is possible. The amount of time that you're given and the opportunities that you have, the technology, it's good to see what other people can do because you can see that if they could reach it, maybe you could reach it.
if that if it's me then it will be and if it's not meant to be then it is what it is but you don't want to have regret for your life that if you tried your best and it didn't work out and one example is i went to school to try and become officer right and i never got hired i graduated i got my certificate i never got hired i applied to 30 different positions sometimes what you want it's not necessarily why you're going there because I got a chance to meet one of my friends and he helped me find my mother more than t uh, 12 years later. That's why I think that I went there. It's because I went there to learn for myself who I was and I went there to meet certain people. And I think if I was given that position, I was in a dark place at the time that I would hurt people. That's why I think it's good to have an outlet, whether it's a gym or martial arts or your hobbies. It's good to be able to express yourself and to use your your knowledge. Sometimes people give you advice on what they think is right, but if you are intelligent, you could decipher on what's in, what's right for you. That's why everybody's unique. Everybody's journey is different because your background is different. How you're living is different. The skills that you have, that there's a lot of skills that you need as a man. And, Sometimes you won't be able to gain these skills until later on, until you live your life and you achieve these goals and then you could you could think yourself, well, is this good enough or is this not good enough for me? I lacked role models and I had reverse role models, people that I didn't necessarily want to be like. If you ask other people, can you analyze me? Can you give me advice on how I can get better? Sometimes people they'll tell you straight up and then sometimes they won't tell you because they don't want to hurt your feelings and those kinds of people you just cut off and limit your time with them because they're not genuine they're not necessarily there to help you because but then you can't expect everybody to think like you because they're not you they didn't grow up like you you should learn the differences in psychology between men and women you should learn the differences between the biology the hormones the objectives they're all different there's pros and cons to certain people and I think on a chessboard you have different pieces that have different functions and that's why maybe you were built this way so that you could help solve your problems and maybe you could help solve someone else's problems in the future. I had a limited mindset and I needed to expand it. I needed to see what's possible because before I started working when I was 13 because there was no food in the fridge and that was my way to make money. It was my way to get my freedom. Because I always hated asking my dad, oh, can you buy me shoes or clothes or whatever. Once I started working, I just did whatever I wanted. His words were just advice at that point. It's good to have your independence. And if I could give myself advice as a 13 year old, I would just say, you should stand up for yourself. If somebody is giving you problems, put your hands on them. And, and then you'll see the time it is, you're gonna lose a lot of fights. Sometimes you don't have to worry about what other people are thinking about you because you're not that important. People treat you how they feel about themselves. You don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate. And you will have to work harder than anyone else because it's your life. You're, you're more invested. You have to learn how to talk to yourself, how to have compassion, understanding, know that you're not perfect and you never will be. Your Asian name, I think for me, my name is Fung. I always hated my name because people couldn't pronounce it, but I do like the meaning because it means path direction. And most people that have that name, they're women, because it's a bisex name, it's a unisex name. Like for example, Ashley or Leslie. Uh, some people, they have a name, for example, Chris, and then if they're Asian, I would say, is that your real name? Is that your birth name? Or is it your name that you go by, your nickname, right? And when I was young, I think I didn't want to be remembered and that's why I never came up with an American name. I always thought that if I said, my name is Johnny, it's fake, you know, it's not real. I always wanted to be authentic. I always wanted to be real, but life, it's not black and white. And if you could use a Showtime name, for example, Showtime, the big show, that it could, it's his name, right? And it makes him feel good, it makes him feel powerful. It's, for example, the ultimate warrior. I always liked him as a kid. That if you could tap into those things to use it as feelings, then it can still be real. Because 
if you could imagine what your life could be like if you could envision it that sometimes you would have to trick yourself into believing that these things are possible sometimes you could daydream about them but just know that you would have to put in the work too but it, it is important that how you think in your mind how you feel in your heart little things for example journaling reading books exercising there's tons of things that you would have to do to level up in life that's why if you ever join a course these courses you could be investing in yourself so that you could learn and if you actually could do every single thing that they're telling you to do that you would be successful i'm not saying you're going to be a gazillionaire but you would be successful that if you can see the small wins the small progressions that's how it is that for example if you go on facebook and you see people's highlights it doesn't pay on complete picture Yes, you, you want to focus on good things. You want to focus on the home runs. But uh, just know that there were a lot of strikeouts before that. And you, you need to put everything in alignment to, to see. That's why if you think of your skills that you want to develop, you would be spending thousands and thousands of hours on these kinds of things. And if I say I'm not great at communication, then I'm reprogramming my mind and I'm telling myself I'm not good at it. But if I say I'm working on becoming better with my communication through reading books, through making videos, through talking at Toastmasters, you could read out loud. That's how you can improve your communication, being more social, getting out there. There's a lot of trade-offs in life and it depends on what skills you want to work at at that time. When I was young, when I first moved to California, I was all about physical strength. But it's one aspect, right? Because the strongest man doesn't always win. The, if you have a strategy and you have the mindset, you can win in that aspect as well. It's kind of similar to Batman versus Superman, where Batman, he's using his brain versus Superman, he's using his muscles, his strength. It, it's all relative, right? It depends on what strategies you want to use at that time. I have hyperthyroid and it affects my sleep, which affects a lot of other things such as mood, your metabolism, your stress. I have heat intolerance where I get hot pretty easily. And another problem that I had was I'm in the survival mode. That's why I like speeding because I like getting out of the way. I like speeding past somebody versus to drive alongside them and if you could reprogram your mind for example i had a miata it was fully built out and probably could go up to 140 that's why i sold the vehicle because i knew that it was the source of my problem that's why i was super aggressive it's the equivalent of if i gave you a 600 cc bike are you gonna ride it speed limit maybe uh, for me, I'm the type of person who is going to max things out. Every single car that I had, I drove at top speed. I tested out how fast it could go. And sometimes you would have to put a limit on how fast you could go in your mind so that you're not putting yourself in these kinds of situations that you don't want to be in because one of my friends, he said, you could go as fast as you want, but how much money do you want to pay? And it does cost money. It does cost your time. It costs other things too. If you're pessimistic, if you're looking for negatives, you will find out. If you say the United States is dangerous, then you will find dangerous things. If you're wasting your time watching the news, you're spending your time making another company money, that there's no real point that you should spend your time to make your own money to improve your mind to educate yourself on certain things and don't necessarily confuse intelligence with education because I've, a lot of people have driver's licenses but that doesn't make them good drivers in my opinion and same thing with bachelor's degrees there's a lot of people who have university degrees and that doesn't make them intelligent so don't confuse the two. Also, what they teach you 
that may or may not be important in my opinion. Also, if you're short, if you're small, if you're short, you can't control that, right? I mean, technically you could buy the, to trick people. I don't feel they need to trick anyone. Uh, you like me or you don't, it is what it is. But it's important for you to look your best so that you can attract those relationships, those events into your life. Because for example, I posted up a picture of a small scruffy dog and a small dog that looks good looking. And the good looking dog, it gets a lot of attention, it gets pet, it gets treated better. It gets more communication. It will walk up to me and it would expect for me to pet it. And it does get pet. But imagine if you're the small scruffy dog where you're always afraid and you don't feel worthy. You're not gonna walk up to somebody and expect them to pet you. That's how you would have to look at things in life. And I think you could learn a lot from watching dogs or certain animals in the sense that a dog, their job is to make you happy. That's that's why they want your attention, right? Because they want to please you because you're their their friend, essentially. Why not ride food? If I'm eating chicken or steak, I will give them some food because imagine if I gave you dog food, right? That's your food. You would only be eating dog food. That's kind of lame. Versus if, if I had some steak, if I was eating some steak and then I didn't give you some, it would be kind of weird, right? It's kind of messed up. That's why if you could treat your, your pets as the humans, right? Try and treat them the best that you could treat them. And that's why you have them. And if you can't give them the best life, well, what are you doing, right? And same thing with you that if you're not living the best that, that you know that you should be living, you would be feeling these things in your heart and you know that you have time to change and to be the best person that you can be. Learn how to read, learn how to communicate with yourself. Make sure you align your mind, what you think with your heart, how you feel, they have to be one. Because if you're not using all of your tools, you're not going to have the best life, the best experience. It's your responsibility, how you think, how you feel, how you interpret things. You create your life. It's not someone else creating it for you. Yes, bad events occur. Uh, for example, imagine there's a thousand people that die every day versus there's 330 million Americans in this country. Uh, bad events are small. The big events, the good events, they're massive. The, the percentage is higher. That's why I focus on where you want to go. You focus on the positive aspects of you. And I wish you well on your journey. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any critiques for me, I'd love to learn about them. Have an open mind, open heart to learning from other people. And that's why you would have to develop those communication skills and put your heart on the line.